In this short video, what we want to do is take a look at a series circuit with two resistors in series using the circuit construction kit from the FET collaboration. We can see here that we have a battery set up with a single loop, one resistor of 20 ohms, and then a second resistor of 20 ohms. I've already placed ammeters in here to measure the current leaving the battery and the current coming back in. So the first question we has to have to ask ourselves is why this is a series circuit. These two resistors are in series because the current that flows through the top resistor all must flow through the second resistor as well. There is no place where we have a junction for the current to split or current to come back in. Now this is nice because both of these resistors are shown in a logical sense that says they are in series. But in addition, we need to determine that they are electrically in series because the current that flows through one is exactly equal to the current that flows through the other at any one point in time. Now, as we did before with the other video, I'm going to show the electrons. So this is the electron current. Notice that it's flowing in the opposite direction of the conventional current. Whatever current flows through this bottom resistor is flowing through the top resistor as well. Now, I can also use, instead of these ammeters that are in the circuit, I can use what they are calling a non-contact ammeter, just for convenience sake. So right here we've got 0.25 amps. We have 0.25 amps, and we have 0.25 amps. So we have the same current flowing through all points of this simple circuit. I'm going to hide the electrons again. So conventional current leaves the battery, flows through the top, comes down through each of the two resistors, and returns. The current flowing from the battery is equal to the current flowing through the first resistor, and that is equal to the current flowing through the second resistor. Now let's take a look at the voltage. So I'm going to bring up a voltmeter here. And using the voltmeter, I'm going to set, to begin with, the, the uh, reference potential here at the negative terminal. We have 10 volts potential between the two ends of the battery. Now, what happens is we're going to lose potential. The potential will drop as we go across the resistors and we need to end back up at the same potential that we started here at the bottom of the battery. In essence, this is called the loop rule. So we are going to gain 10 volts of potential at all points along this circuit in the wires. We are at a potential of 10 volts. And then when we come across this resistor, we're going to lose some voltage. And we find that now we are at 5 volts in between the two resistors. Now that's a nice clean number simply because we have two equal resistors right now. We'll change that in a minute. And then we're going to lose potential again as we go across the second resistor and now we're back down to zero volts. We increase potential across the battery. We lose potential across the first resistor and then we lose potential across the second resistor. The total voltage provided by the battery must equal the voltage drops, the changes in voltage across the sum of the two resistors. If I look at simply the potential drop across the top resistor, we find that there is a loss of 5 volts as we move across that resistor. And as we move across the second resistor, we also find a loss of 5 volts. Again, that number is the same simply because the two resistances are the same. 
how about the total current that flows from the circuit? We see that we've got 0.25 amps flowing from the battery. We've got 10 volts. Effectively, if two resistors are in series, they're going to act like one resistor which has a resistance of the sum of the two resistances. So the overall resistance for this circuit would be 40 ohms. 40 ohms, 10 volts, we find that we're going to have 0.25 amps flowing out of the battery and through these two resistors. Now the last thing I want to do is change one of the resistances. At any one point in time, the current through, the, through one resistor is the same as the current through the other. But if we make a change to one of the resistors, that will affect the current that flows through the circuit. So I'm going to change the resistance, and I'm going to make this upper resistor only 10 ohms. At this point, that now reduces the overall current in the circuit, sorry, the overall resistance of the circuit. We increase, we have the same voltage, and therefore we're going to have a higher current flowing out of the battery. So at this point we have an overall resistance of 30 ohms, an equivalent resistance of 30 ohms. We have 10 volts applied to that 30 ohms, and therefore we're going to have 0.33 amps, a third of an amp, flowing through those two. Now let's go back and look at the voltage now. Uh, we've got 10 volts across the battery, but now we find that as we go across this resistor, we've only lost 3.33 volts. We have the third of an amp flowing through the 10 ohms. This potential at the point between the two resistors is now higher than it was before because we reduced the resistance of the top, we had an overall adjustment in current, and actually the ratio of these two resistors is now different. We then lose 6.67 volts across the second resistor. So if we were to measure the voltage drop across the top resistor, we lose 3 and a third volts now. We measure the voltage drop, the change in voltage across the second resistor, we lose 6.67 volts across the second resistor. Changing either of those two resistors will change the overall resistance of the circuit and thereby immediately change the overall current flowing out of the battery. That current flowing out of the battery in this situation is the same as the current flowing through the top resistor and the same as the current flowing through the bottom resistor because there is no place else for the current to go or for extra current to merge in. So voltages will add up. The current through two resistors in series will be the same at any one point in time. And lastly, adjusting the values of the resistors, either of the resistors means that you need to reanalyze the whole circuit.